the director of House of a Thousand Corpses, Halloween. The stranger that invaded my happy home on that boob tube. I want a man that makes my blood run cold. A man that every time he enters my crypt, it's like a stake through my dead black heart. Looking for a vision. A queen. He's a phony! He's a phony! I, want... I knew the moment I laid eyes on you that you were special. I understand if you don't feel the same. I'm just a regular gal living a boring, normal life. <laughs> Not a decade has gone by since the Munsters finished its run in 1966 that an attempt hasn't been made to relaunch the franchise in some fashion. The very next month after the final episode aired saw the release of a Technicolor feature film follow-up. Then came an animated TV pilot in the 70s, a TV reunion film in the 80s... I hope nobody tries to get fresh. You know how hard it is for me to say no. Are you two ready? The Munsters Today in 1988, and then two made-for-TV films in the 90s, both of which I've covered on this channel. The first, Here Come the Monsters, is actually pretty good. Excluding the first feature film, it's the only one that's managed to capture the tone and charm of the original series while bringing the characters to the present day. <laughs> in the early 2000s, the Wayans brothers secured the rights for their own movie reboot, which never came to fruition. Then in 2012, Brian Fuller got his hands on the characters for a dark, gritty pilot called Mockingbird Lane which wasn't picked up for series. Yet another attempt came in 2017 when it was announced that Seth Meyers was developing a new adaptation for NBC, which would have seen the Munsters in present-day Brooklyn clashing with hipsters. You must be kidding me! So it was surprising when just four years after that, news broke that self-confessed Munsters superfan Rob Zombie would write and direct a reboot for Peacock. The production company behind the film was to be Universal 1440, the studio's direct-to-video label, which is known for their highly acclaimed films. Boy, oh, we're all in trouble! <laughs> they specialize in low-budget sequels to popular Universal hits. They shoot their movies quick and cheap, often ushering their productions overseas to save money. Even though this branch is not known for quality, I figured having Rob Zombie at the helm of this movie would ensure it would be made with at least some reverence for the original show and characters. And if they told you Wolverines would make good house pets, would you believe them? Since pre-production, he has been sharing really great behind-the-scenes photos on location from Budapest. The costumes, makeup, and sets all seem to be pretty authentic recreations. In October of 2021, he finally revealed his cast. Jeff Daniel Phillips, Sherry Moon Zombie, and Daniel Robach. And though they are regular Rob Zombie cast members, they all seem like inspired choices, I guess. Jeff Daniel Phillips certainly has Herman's stature, and he's no stranger to acting under prosthetics. This guy was actually the original Geico Caveman. Discovering fire, inventing the wheel, laying the foundation for all mankind. You're right, good point. Sorry we couldn't get that to you sooner. Daniel Robach, for those that don't know, is also a huge Monsters fan and horror movie collector. One of the greatest things I think I have in this entire collection uh, is this doll signed by Fred Gwynn uh, that wow. he signed me on the set of a movie we did together. People seemed less than enthused about the casting of Sherry Moon Zombie, but it's clear she's a fan of the show as well, and the project seemed to be a passion project for her as much as it was for her husband. I knew the moment I laid eyes on you that you were special. I understand if you don't feel the same. The last time I saw a hand that big, it was in a butcher's window. But then the casting announcements kept coming, with some characters from the original Monsters show, while others seemed to be invented for this story. And this is when I started to question whether having a Monster super fan spearhead the project was a good idea or not. From these casting announcements, it just seemed that Rob Zombie was attempting to cram in as many references and nods to the original series as possible. But still, the style of things looked really great. As this first photo was in black and white, fans started to speculate that the movie 2 would be in black and white as an homage to the original. But as more and more updates came, it seemed like the movie was taking an awfully long time to shoot. There was a Halloween post, then a Christmas post, then a Valentine's Day post. I mean, seriously, if we assume the filming start date as the day of that first cast photo, and the wrap date as was announced in July, that's about a 10 month shoot. Shooting you? Lily, that's a show business expression like uh, roll em, lights, action, anchors away, that kind of stuff. <laughs> and yeah, I know reshoots and COVID delays and all that didn't help, but 10 months? <laughs> Don't be ridiculous, Herm. They must have stopped to have a cigarette or something. Still, I was cautiously optimistic. 
I mean, it had to be better than watching the Munsters argue with baristas in present-day Brooklyn. I at least wanted to reserve judgment until a full trailer came, as the short teaser released in June was basically a remake of the opening credits. Hard to really get a feel for what the movie would be like, but the house and costumes at least looked good. The teaser also confirmed that the movie would be in color, rather than black and white, even though the black and white portions of that teaser looked so much better than the color one. Well, now what? Regardless, as merchandise reveals and marketing continued to make its way online, the movie started to look like at least a fun adaptation. Even Grandpa's new mustache began to grow on me, and I was anxious to see the trailer. And now I'm a different kind of anxious because of that trailer. Now look, it very well might not be indicative of the finished movie, but this is one of the worst trailers I have ever seen. And it's not like I can even cite like one glaring issue here, it's a series of baffling creative decisions layered on top of each other. After watching it a few times, I can safely say that there are two elements of this trailer that I really like. The old Universal intro, and Daniel Roebuck's take on Grandpa. Oh, come on, you know, and I know, that we gotta get rid of that bozo Herman Munster. Everything else is just so distracting. <laughs> the performances, audio mixing, color grading, music choices... I'm looking for a vision. Weird editing cuts, tone... I'm gonna go. Okay. Isn't that terrible? Everything is so synthetic these days. <laughs> it almost makes me question if Rob Zombie has ever even seen an episode of The Monsters, which I know he has. I mean, the guy recorded the audio commentary for Monster Go Home. There are a lot of people who have been saying that the trailer is supposed to be bad, that it's supposed to look cheap and campy like the original show, but that's missing the point. The original show was never campy. It wasn't like Batman, for example. It was your standard 60s family sitcom where the family just so happened to be monsters. The look of the show wasn't really camp, but more like Leave it to Beaver. Making this movie look cheap wasn't an intentional decision to homage a style. It's just a low-budget film like the other direct-to-video Universal sequels. The original TV series was also low-budget, but it looked like a regular sitcom of the era. I just invented something to keep the inside of my car quiet. It fits right over her mouth. <laughs> a lot of it had to do with it being in black and white, which was done to save money. But at the same time, it paid tribute to the classic movie monsters that inspired the Munster family, and also disguised a lot of the cheap sets and costumes. Even that first 90s TV movie was cheap, but it looked like the original show, thanks to great set design and makeup that made these monsters feel like they belonged in present day. One of the bizarre choices in this new trailer is that they include shots from that black and white teaser intercut with the color footage, and I just don't know why. It just makes the color footage look so much worse by comparison. I feel like they are leaning way too much into the Technicolor style here, but Technicolor was a really specific film look that just can't be replicated in digital with some color grading. I mean, here's a side-by-side -side of a shot from the trailer in color and in black and white. The black and white really does hide a lot of that cheap look and I wish they had gone with a more desaturated color overall. Remember, my children, no matter how gruesome he looks, he's still our Herman. Now, beyond the look of the movie, another thing that feels really off is the story. The movie is a prequel, called A Love Story in the Trailer. I'm assuming the movie will begin in Transylvania, with Herman being created and first meeting Lily, and it will end in Mockingbird Heights, where they arrive at their new home. Oh, I guess we're gonna have to get used to it. Now, both Sherry Moon and Jeff Daniel Phillips are in their 50s, and I mean no disrespect to them when I say that they look it. Fred Gwynn was 38 during the first season of The Monsters, and Ivan DiCarlo was 42. But this movie presumably takes place years before that, as it plays heavily into what looks like a college rom-com plot, with Grandpa being the disapproving father of Lily's boyfriend. The actors' ages just don't really work in selling what should be a refreshing storyline for these characters. That means that this Saturday, you and Lily will have been married 100 years! <laughs> oh boy! Yeah, I know, they're monsters and age doesn't really matter, but that's not an excuse to bypass continuity like that. Again, Rob Zombie's been trying to make this movie for 20 years, but it's clear he just didn't update his storyline to reflect the age of the actors he wanted to cast. I mean, if Jeff and Sherry are supposed to be playing the younger versions of the characters in the original series, the energy just doesn't sync up here. They feel a lot more like Gomez and Morticia. 
While Herman and Lily always had clearly loved each other, their romance was never the focus of the show. Again, it was a family sitcom, with Marilyn and Eddie being a big part of that. Don't talk fresh to your mother, and come out of there. <laughs> While the Adams family had a macabre dark humor, the Munsters always had a more satirical edge. Go, baby. Go. The Adams family knew they were kooky and embraced it, while the Munsters thought they were just the average American family. We're not just the plain old Munsters anymore, you know. We're the average American family. And that's just not the vibe that this trailer presents. I think Universal desperately wanted to get this movie out by Halloween, but there were obvious production delays resulting in that 10-month shooting period. I'd be willing to bet that the movie isn't even finished editing yet, as the movie only finished shooting this month. Also, pretty much all of the effects look like they're simple After Effects placeholders. With only a couple of months to spare, Universal, I guess, just wanted the marketing campaign to begin, so they just slapped this trailer together. I mean, Rob Zombie and the cast all seem like great people, and they seem really passionate about this movie, so I still want to be optimistic here. Look, maybe it is just a bad trailer and hopefully some of these problems will be addressed before its release in September. Honestly, any criticism that this trailer has been getting just shows how beloved the Munsters still are. I guess it is a little unfair to speculate on a movie that hasn't been released yet, because as Herman would say, Let's not start scratching till we know where the fleas are biting. 